So I will now move us to item 1.2, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask Trustee Bellano Skep in a minute, in a second. Thank you, Vice President Trustee Soto for realizing. I will ask Trustee Bellano Scal to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, Trustee Bellano Scow. I will now move us to item two, approval of agenda 2.1, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a first. Second. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry four, zero. Is it three or two, Eva? It is still three. Okay, that will carry four zero three. Okay, and now I will move us to item three, um, four and three point one, the provisional appointment for trustee area seven. This report will be presented by me, Georgia Costa, the president of the governing board of education for PBUSD. I I want to take a moment to note for the public record that we received three applications from three individual applicants. However, one of the applicants post the redistricting of the governing board of education's trustee areas, uh, post the last census of 2020, no longer resides in trustee area seven. And this was a, and this applicant was disqualified on that basis. Um, now the board will conduct individual qualified candidate interviews. We're going to hold discussion and take action by a majority vote to make provision, the provisional appointment to fill the governing board of education vacancy for the remainder of trustee Dr. Holmes term. Each board member has two individual sheets containing the seven interview questions, one sheet per applicant. The president will ask questions number one and seven. We will now determine which board member will ask the remaining questions by roll call. So for each question, starting from question two through six, Eva, can you roll call for us? Who is the first board member for each? Okay. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So this is for question two. On mm -hmm. okay. um, Trustee Scow, we'll have question two. Trustee Flores, number three. And are we expecting Trustee Caserpa or do I? Um, let's go ahead and put her in. And if we have to bump, we'll, we'll are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so Trustee Caserpa. Mm -hmm. And then Trustee Dodge, number five. Vice President Soto, you'll do number six. And President Acosta, you're doing one and seven. Thank you, Eva. Um, and then now we are going to ram randomly select a, num a, a number um, we will hear first from the first applicant, and then each applicant will be asked the same seven questions and provided two minutes for each question and two minutes for a closing um, statement. So now we are going to randomly select out of our two qualified applicants, and I will ask Vice President Trustee Soto to select one name. And if you could read off the name. Misty Navarro. Okay. So Misty Navarro will go first, and then going second will be Victoria Holler. Okay. Um, and now I believe we're going to ask. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
And if you could give us just a moment, we're going to readjust things.
Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Navarro, for waiting um, while we got a couple of technical things out of the way. If you're ready, if you want to come up and take a seat, and the we're, if we have the questions, we will be reading off based off our um, random drawing. I will start with question one and end with question seven. Um, each board member will be asking the same question of both you and Ms. Huller. Um, and then you will have also time for a, a closing statement at the end. Does that sort of make sense? And then we have the questions in front of you as well. Any questions or anything before we start? No, I don't think so. You're good? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Ms. Navarro, for uh, applying. And I want to, I will start with the opening question. What do you see as the ba basic purpose of the public schools and what is the role of the Governing Board of Education in fulfillment of that purpose? So I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't mean to go ahead and cut you off. I think <laughs> we're giving Eva two minutes per question. Two minutes per question. It's okay. So um, I think the basic goal of public schools is to make sure that they're maximizing the future success of its students and meeting them where they're at. You know, whether that's preparation for college or preparation for trade school or whatever they decide to go into in life um, and to allow for equal opportunities to all the students. Um, I myself am a public school student. I went to probably 17 different schools before I started high school. And so I've had a lot of experience within the public school system and I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And so my role as a potential board member, I think would be to work with the superintendent to guide that vision and you know, listen to what her ideas are and work together as a board. Um, I have not been on a school board before, but I have been on the hospital foundation board. And I have really good friends that are teachers and administrators. And I've noticed there's a lot of similarities between healthcare and the public school system. So I'm hoping to be able to bring some of that skill set into this job. Sorry, thank you, Ms. Navarro. And now we will move to Trustee uh, Bolano Scow for question number two. Thank you. Uh, what do you think are the most important skills for students to have when they graduate? Well, I think the most important skills for students to have when they graduate is to be able to not necessarily know all of the answers, but be able to figure out how to research those answers and get the answers to the questions that they need, how to critically appraise um, works to understand what is a credible source and what is not a credible source. They need to have the interpersonal skills to be able to advocate for themselves, but also to follow through on their work. Um, one of the biggest things I work on with my own students is that you know, punctuality is important. Uh, people don't remember when you're five minutes early, but they always remember when you're five minutes late. Um, teaching accountability, uh, reinforcing what the students are learning at home, and making sure that you're providing them with real world experience so they can be successful when they get out there. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. And now we will move to uh, Trustee Flores for question three. And sorry about the little interruption with the grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a three-part question for you. Um, what are you proud of in our district? Um, what would you like to accomplish as a board member within our district? And what is your highest priority and why? Well, I think one of the things that I'm proudest of in this district is the number of community schools that you have. Um, I'm a big proponent of that program and the fact that what, 24 out of 34 of your schools are community schools, I think is highly impressive. Um, because, you know, in the emergency department, I see that, you know, health is not just about your body and, you know, the actual metal, medical illness that you're going through, but every aspect affects, you know, health, just like every aspect of the student's life affects their ability to learn. And so the fact that you're addressing, you know, hunger, the fact that you're addressing, you know, resources, whether it's, you know, parenting resources to help them, you know, man help their student be successful in school and at home. Um, but I've been really impressed with the numerous emails and texts that I get on a daily basis of all the resources that this district has to offer. Um, one of the things that I would like to accomplish as a board member is I would like to see more parental involvement. I noticed when it comes to the um, LCAF goals for the state of California and our individual LCAP goals for this 
particular district that one of the things I think that gets maybe not as addressed is parental involvement and I would like to see more parental and student involvement in this district and that would be a high priority. Um, another high priority for me would just be to learn as much as I can while I'm here. Um, I like to think that I'm a very quick study and I'm logical and I make sure that I try to investigate and get to get as much information before making a decision as possible. And um, yeah, I think that's the main thing that I probably bring to this district. And I guess the highest priority um, that I see for this district, and one of the things I love about it is we have a really challenging school district. You know, the number of students that are in poverty, the number of students that are English um, second, you know, English mm -hmm. is not their primary language. And just like I do at work, I really feel you know, when you get people involved that really care about the students and care about student success, that you can really change the course of someone's life and make a difference and improve their success in life and their ability, you know, to hold it down a job and to, you know, get themselves out, you know, of poverty and make their, their parents proud. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, why our families have, have their students here is so that they can be as successful as possible. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Now we will move to um, question number four, and Trustee DeSerpa will be asking this question. Thank you, and sorry about that interruption, Dr. Navarro. I had a grasshopper flew at me. Okay. I decided to camp out in my <laughs> space, so I needed to remove it. So I sorry think it's about a good that. omen. Yeah, hopefully. It, wasn't a it was big, it was like that big. Um, okay, as a trustee, what do you see as your purpose or primary role? What would you fulfill Wait, how would you fulfill that role, both as an individual and as a member of the governing board? Well, you know, like I said, I will be doing a lot of learning on the job, um, but I think my primary role is to support the superintendent and to help her, you know, her vision come to fruition. Um, I feel like I'm uniquely poised in this area because not only am I a mom of two students in Aptos, and you know, have a fairly extensive you know network among the parents in Aptos. But another uh, thing is, I work in Salinas, and so a lot of the patients that patient population that I work with, including one of my physician assistants who came here, has three students in the district and uh, on the Monterey side, is being able to advocate for all of those families and all of those students. And you know, just like at the hospital, where patients really are our primary customer and the thing that we should all be focusing on, while everybody is important, I think that student success and achievement is probably my number one goal. Thank you, um, and I apologize, I keep saying Ms. Navarro, I should be referring to you as Dr. Navarro, my apologies for that. Dr. Navarro, we will now move to question five, and Trustee Dodge Jr. will be asking this question. Good evening. Thank you for throwing your hat in the ring. It's people think school board's easy, but it's not. I don't anticipate it's going to be so, easy. But uh, my question is: Describe your response if a parent cornered you in a grocery store and asked for your support on a particular hot issue. Which will happen? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the first thing that I would do is be an empathetic listener because you know often I am made aware of problems that I really can't directly affect but sometimes people just need to be heard. And so I would probably listen and you know, redirect that unfortunately that's actually not my primary responsibility on the school board. And that you know, operation and day-to-day -day decisions are, you know, that's the job of the individual schools and the superintendent. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. And now we will move to question six, and this will be asked by Vice President Trustee Soto. Yeah, once again, thank you for coming in and you know, putting your hat in the till, if you will, to come into a uh, unique situation. You know, we have uh, different views from different members of the community, and and we're always in here trying to figure things out for the benefit, benefit of the kids. Um, so now my question is, if you were faced with a tough issue as a board member, which we have, cutting staff programs, what kind of data would you need to help make your decision? Well, I think getting all the relevant data 
as opposed to how many students would be affected by this decision, you know, what are the alternative programs that would exist that might fill this the same fill the same goal? And if we have any redundancy in the system, you know, what's the cost over several years? Um, you know, who like what is the target population that is, you know, being affected by these decisions? And I make hard decisions every day and I'm you know, I've served on a hospital board. I've served in the leadership of the hospital with deal with you know the nursing unions and often a lot of conflicting agendas. And I believe in creative solutions and making sure that everybody's heard. And at the end of the day, if one person feels like they won a negotiation, then you probably haven't negotiated successfully. I think both people should probably be a little bit disappointed, but at the end of the day, realize that, it's that what if we put our students first and make sure that we're making decisions in the best interest of our students, I think people eventually fall in line, just with, like with patients. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. Now I will ask you the seventh and final question. Um, I did, can you identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal value and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. So I don't think this was that recent, but um, my students are both at Aptos Junior High and Aptos High School, and I know it was a very controversial decision about bringing back the SRO officers after they had been removed from Aptos High. Um, you know, and I'm sure as a board that was a really tough decision because I understand you know, one population feels targeted as opposed to another population, but at the same time, you know, we need to provide a safe learning environment for our students and making sure that everybody is safe and feels comfortable at school. Um, so that would probably be one that, that came to mind. I know you make tons of tough decisions all the time, but you have to balance, I think, the needs of our students, the safety of our students, providing an environment in which they can learn, um, at the same time being sensitive to the implications that go along with that. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. And um, I will now, sorry, I'm trying to do timer and I usually have a great timekeeper, um, <laughs> but I'm trying to balance it all. Um, so now, um, so that's all of our seven questions. So we will now move into um, your closing statement and provide you two minutes with your closing statement. So I just wanna thank all of you for taking the time to consider my application. Um, it was not necessarily something that I expected to, but when the opportunity arose, um, it was a good time in my career. I'd just termed out from the hospital foundation board, and I recently stepped back from director of the emergency department in my leadership role, which allowed me kind of the bandwidth and the space to find something new to be passionate about. And just like I'm very passionate about my job and what I do, and I bring that energy to work every time I show up, um, and I don't focus on like what I can't do for people, even if it, I, I'm not giving them exactly what they want. You know, usually I focus on what it is we can get done together and how we can help them achieve their goals. And I really hope to bring the same energy to this position if, if it's chosen that I get appointed. Um, I am a really hard worker. I'm very passionate about the things that I do. Um, I've been encouraged by many members of the community to do this, and I realize it's quite a big task and not an easy one, but I feel like I'm up for the challenge and I don't rattle easily. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. Anything else? You still have a little bit of time. Are um, you good? No, I You're fine to be good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I think another big top priority of mine is, you know, I've been doing a lot of research on our district and, you know, our math and English scores. And what I'd really like to see is just the whole school district bring that up. I've, uh, I've consulted two students, my children, for their feedback and ideas. Uh, Logan, my youngest, said, you know, we should be rewarded with more days off school. And I said, I'm not sure that that's actually possible. <laughs> but I'll see what I can do. Um, but you know, there are a lot of creative solutions that I've talked to um, my friends who are in administration and education about you know, like the absentee issue. Um, one friend's school district does credit recovery on the weekends where they make it super fun on Saturdays and you know, they're able to make up some of that absenteeism 
you know, so it doesn't look like a punishment like Saturday school, but it's actually something that's really creative and really fun. So I, I guess I just hope to be able to brainstorm ideas, um, you know, and support the superintendent and support the schools and get to know all the schools in this area. I have some connections at, at various ones. I've spoken at Watsonville High School before to their students. I've spoken at Pajaro. I've spoken at Aptos High to the Pre-Med Society. So I really believe in mentorship um, and I just want to do everything for all the students in this district, including my own. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. Um, we're going to ask you now if you'll adjourn our meeting for, from us mm -hmm. and we will bring in Ms. Huller. Great. Thank you so much for, Thank your, you time. for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Holler. Um, so we've gone through the process of selecting who will be asking which questions. I will ask question one and seven. So I'll start and close. There are seven questions total, and I will give you a two-minute close. And then each one of my colleagues will ask questions two through six. Okay. And, and all the questions are right there in front of you. Um, so we'll read them out to you, but they are right there in front of you. Any questions on any of that? No. Okay. Ready? Yes. <laughs> as ready as can be, right? Exactly. I get it. Um, okay. So then I'll go ahead and start with opening question number one. Um, so what do you see as the basic purpose of the public schools and what is the role of the Board of Education, the Governing Board of Education, in the fulfillment of that purpose? I think the basic purpose is to give our society, our children, a baseline educational level um, so that we can 
continue to have a healthy society and community and um, financial, the whole, uh, gosh, I totally had a little moment there. So having equity and equality across our, our communities, having the basic steps for each child, each grade, um, to ideally have a unified experience to where all of our kids and the future members, I mean, they are members of our society, but when they become our age, that they are able to function, become productive members of the community, and that we're all kind of on the same page. The board's purpose is to create the content, the curriculum for that to happen. Um, obviously, we all have our individual ideas about that, but working together as the board to figure out how to make that happen, how for the social, emotional, mental health, academics, how that we can support that coming all together to raise this next generation to be hopefully better, you know, getting better each time. I know they have the, the greatest generation, but I think we can do better. We can all, <laughs> we can all strive for better. And I think that working together as a community, having goals that are realistic and actionable, and that we can all work together and, and communicate well and compromise. Sorry, I'm not, I also forgot to note I'm also the timekeeper. Okay. I usually have a great timekeeper, but I'm keeping time tonight. And, and I think I apologize, I didn't say. So, and, and you were totally fine, but two minutes for each response. And she yeah, was, was closing. I'm sorry. I think yeah. I may have left that. You out. did say two minutes, so I was kind of like, I'm so sorry. I don't want to keep rambling and on sorry, here. We don't, yeah, we don't have a timer oh, yeah. going, but you, you'll hear the duck quack. And if the duck quacks, <laughs> I'll still give you a minute to wrap up. Okay. Or not a minute, good. but a few All right. seconds. Sounds so, I'm good. so sorry. Um, okay, thank you for your response to question one. So now we're gonna move to question two and Trustee Bolano Scout will be asking question two. Yes, thank you for applying and being here. Uh, my question is, what do you think are the most important skills for students to have when they graduate? I think the most important skills, my son's a senior at Aptos High right now and I can see the confidence that's grown over the last four years specifically. He had his COVID eighth grade year was full full distance learning. So seeing kids come back to school, keeping track of all of the other, the kids that, um, he's been in drama all four years and I've been really involved with that. And so seeing all of those kids grow um, and seeing their confidence built, I think is a really important skill and interpersonal relationships and being able to do something like this, come up here and speak well with others. Um, but I think going back to my point of everyone on being on the same page, there needs to be a basic understanding of math, of how to write a letter to the superintendent, how to write a letter to a congressperson, perhaps, um, or even just a cover letter on a resume, how to have a proper resume. Um, when I was in junior high, I had something called teen skills where they taught us to balance a checkbook. You know, I don't, that's probably not, but just you know, some financial literacy needs to happen as well. So I think it's more of a whole child approach, but the most important skills are being able to have a mastery of in the English language, obviously, ideally more than one, but to put yourself out there as an adult to Cabrillo, to a university, to a trade school, and feel confident in your abilities to handle life. Thank you, Ms. Holler. And now we'll move to question three, and this will be asked by Trustee Flores. Good evening. Hi. So this is like a three-part, four-part question, so if you, wow. it's down there for you to see. Um, what are you proud of in this district? Uh, what would you like to accomplish as a board member in this district? And uh, which is the, your highest priority and why? Um, I would say I'm proud of the diversity of the student body and the, 
the teachers as well. The, the whole community, I think, has a, a pretty good representation of obviously our county, but just showing kids different, um, you know, we have the migrant students, we have the kids that may need more help, the special day class at Rio de Mar where my kids went. We have the NEST program and integrating the children into the classroom and having that normalized, um, I think has been really helpful in general. Um, and, okay, where are we go? Proudest of administration. I think that all of the things that have been initiated since, I mean, I know it was kind of ramping up, but the wellness centers and the food what program and it was really cool during COVID when you could come pick up the, the food to do the home meal projects. Um, so I think I haven't seen this personally anywhere else, like the overall effort that's been made here to make available extras. You know, growing up here in California and I mean, obviously as a kid, you maybe don't realize all this is going on, but it just seems like this district has made a big effort to service not just in the schools but outside of the schools uh, as i would like to accomplish as a board member is moving things forward moving towards the goals that um, are set out in the engage um, pamphlet and on the internet and um, so i think moving forward getting a lot of those things done or chipped away at moving the ball forward is i know you know Rome wasn't built in a day. And, okay, let's go on the way. Highest priority, I think increasing, I mean, test scores are such a metric that we're all focused on, but I think it goes back to my point of getting everyone on the same page, that we are below California standards in a lot of areas. And so I think growing the academic focus um, just so we get to a better, a higher level, getting our students ready to become part of our society. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holler. Now we'll move to question number four, and this will be asked by Trustee Tuserpa. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your interest in the position. Um, as a trustee, what do you see as your purpose or primary role? How would you fulfill that role, both as an individual and as a member of the governing board? I believe my primary role, my purpose would be to serve the community district seven, get a feel of what's going on in, in my district, because I'm hoping the rest of you have yours covered, but bringing the knowledge of my district to the meetings, um, working closely with uh, going to see the schools. I have a very good personal relationship with Megan Green at Rio Del Mar, having been on the board there for four years, the Parent Alliance and president for two years. So I have a good sense of what can be done on a board <laughs> and what um, we have trouble getting everyone on the same page, you know, the Parent Alliance to the individual school, to the board. Um, so I have a, a very intimate knowledge with that and I think, again, compromise, but my, my primary role would be to help move the ball forward, like I said, and really represent my district and what everyone there wants. Um, I'm fairly high profile, I would say. I've been called the mayor of Aptos before by a couple different people in their own um, right, not knowing about it. So I have been involved in the community a lot. And so I think I have a good handle already about what my district is about and wants. And so I would fulfill that role of bringing that knowledge here to the board and giving my input and compromising just you know, I know we all have our knowledge that we can bring and create the community that we all want. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Holler. And now we'll move to question five, and this will be asked by Trustee Dodge Jr. Thank you, 
for coming this evening and thank you thank for you. applying what people think it's an easy job, <laughs> but it's not. It's not. But um, my question is, describe your response if a parent cornered you in the grocery store and asked for your support on a particular issue, which I'm guaranteeing will happen. Uh, and this has happened to me as the president of the Parent Alliance, you know, people pushing for the blue park. Where's our garden? Where is this money going to? Why do you want more money? Um, so, but this is a bigger global issue here in the district rather than our little nitpicky things, right? So I think as we discussed at the meeting a little over a week ago that being neutral, being diplomatic, saying I'm interested in hearing you and I'll bring this back to the board meeting, never giving any, oh yes, I completely agree with you, or that's what I want to, don't, don't give them any false hope or promise, don't make any promises, right? Hear what they're saying, appreciate what they're saying, thank you for your input, I will bring that to the board meeting. Um, you can always write to Dr. Contreras pass the buck a little bit. Uh, so that's how I would handle it. Just diplomatic and acknowledging that I hear the person and that I will do my best to bring your concern, but that, you know, I can't guarantee anything. Thank you, Ms. Holler. Now we'll move to question six, and this will be asked by Vice President Trustee Soto. Hey, good evening, Ms. Holler. Thank you for coming in and applying and taking an interest with us. And we have a unique um, position, and we're always hearing different opinions and different sides on situations. So that being said, so if you were faced with a tough issue as a board member, cutting staff programs, what kind of data would you need to help you make your decision? I think the first level would be statistics, numbers, return on investment, and then you need to go down to the personal human level. Numbers don't show the picture by themselves. You need to take that and then also look, okay, well, how did this pan out? What happens if we take away one of the teachers and now, you know, instead of three classes, we have 34 kids in, in two classes. How does that work? What are the outcomes then? You can't just rely on the base level data. That's a great place to start. However, you cannot see the personal impact just based on that. I think that I would work with the board members. You know, I've gone into a meeting in the Parent Alliance feeling very strongly one way and really hardly advocating for my position only to have the treasurer tell me, well, this is the money situation and I don't think that this is gonna work out and here's why, and me being completely like, oh, okay, I see why that won't work. Even though I feel strongly that it should work this way, it's not gonna work that way. So I think open communication with the board and with the people in our districts will help come to conclusions with the data, the, the numbers to to make these decisions, but I know that a lot of compromise is involved. Thank you, Ms. Holler. And I'm going to ask you the seventh and final question. Um, can you identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal value and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue? Something that's been brought up to me in my community is the issue of ethnic studies classes. And I know my son in particular was disappointed in what he was offered and what was taught in his high school experience, just in regular classes and in the APs that he's um, taken. That being said, I have seen at the junior high, my daughter's there her first year, um, Ms. Gill in particular, the art teacher, 
has multicultural art pro projects that she's planned and done. So I think that's really cool. And I think we are a very diverse multicultural group in this community. And so honoring that and then also educating about other ethnicities and cultures and values is very important to making our kids tolerant, respectful members of our community and our society. So that one has been tough. I know there's a lot of big feelings about that. And I think in terms of that, serving the students really needs to come first. So that, um, you know, I don't wanna, I <laughs> personally got very passionate about this issue with those that I was speaking with, but I would like to remain neutral on it and just speak to the experiences that I've had with my kids, talking with them, and uh, also working with the staff at Rio Del Mar, Kelly Lowe, the librarian has done a great job exposing the kids to different cultures and like reading about Diwali um, and you know Hanukkah trying to honor other cultures that are not as served um, with our general white Christian population. And I think it's very important for our kids to be exposed to everything else. Otherwise we have a very limited community view. Thank you, Ms. Holler. So that is the seventh and final question. So now uh, we will give you a two minute closing statement. Okay. I would love to be a part of this community, this board to help affect change and knowing that it's a slow process, working together to, like I said, move the ball forward to create positive outcomes for our kids first and foremost to affect, you know, it's like a ripple effect, right? If we can get our kids off to a great start, it's just gonna make everything in our society and our community better, closer. And I think I can really make a difference having had experience with this and having people very comfortable with coming up to me and asking about certain things. Why are we doing it this way? Can you help me get this? dealt with. Um, so I think that I, I know a bunch of people, they feel very comfortable talking to me. And so I feel confident in my ability to bring that to the board and hopefully work with everyone here to better our district and our community, our state, you know, try to make it to a global level. And that starts here. And so, Ms. Heller, you still have a little bit of time. If there's anything you wanted to add, you don't have to feel that you need to, but I just <laughs> wanted to let you know you do still have a little bit of time. Uh, it's yeah. your free will. If anyone has any other questions. Uh, I do love working with kids. I know that's not the main focus on the board, but when Dr. Contreras spoke to us about going and visiting sites, that's something that I would definitely be very interested in. And I spoke to how my daughter came home and be like, oh yeah, Jennifer Holm came to our classroom today. And it was, you know, so I think uh, just being able to get out into the community and see not just what parents are coming to me with, but seeing what's going on at the sites, because it's very different from Rio Del Mar to Minty White to, you know, Aptos High to Watsonville High. So even though I'm in the seventh district, I think it's important to take a global view of all of the sites. I mean, that's, a big job, 34 schools, whatever. Uh, but I think that's an important role in being on the board is actually being on the ground and seeing what's actually going on, seeing what our money is going to. Thank you, Ms. Holler. Um, so now um, uh, Ms. Renteria is going to bring in um, Dr. Navarro. We'll ask for you to take a seat in the audience. You feel free to take the first row any row you want. And, and we're gonna just sort of take a brief pause to readjust a few things um, in the room while also Ms. Renteria brings in Dr. Navarro. I also wanna take um, this time to note that the next item we will be moving to is 3.2 public comment on 3.1. 
Um, and again, as this is a special board meeting uh, per the Brown Act, Brown Act, we can only have public comment on items on the agenda, and that is item 3.1. And all public speaker cards need to be put in prior to us starting at 3.2. So if you would like to put in a public speaker card for item 3.2, now would be a good time because once we start, we will not be accepting more cards. Thank you. Okay, so we're ready to move on to item 3.2, public comment on 3.1, and this is for only in-person comments. So I just wanna make sure before we start this item that everyone who wants to turn in a public speaker card has had that opportunity, they're done, because we are closing that time now. Okay, so each speaker will have two minutes with a max of of um, 30 minutes, and I don't think that's gonna be an issue here tonight. Um, and again, comments need to be only related to item 3.1 per the Brown Act, as this is a special board meeting. So do we have any public speakers? We have one, Karen Serrano, 3.1. No, all threes. They're, are, are they all 3.2? They're all 3.2. All right, so everybody's under 3.2. Yes. I apologize. All right, so I'll call everybody's name then. Karen Serrano, Chris Webb, Nelly Vaquera, and Takashi Misuno. Come forward. Takashi, go come forward. You're you're first. You're up. I, I believe the order we receive the cards is Takashi, you're first. Ms. Vicara, Bar Ms. Vicara, you're second. Mr. Webb, you're third. And Karen, you're number you're four. You're number four. Sorry. So, Takashi, you are first, please. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. And uh, I have lived in this country for 34 years. The reason why I moved to this country is because I am married to American, like you. And uh, I was very fortunate because I could have a chance to study multi-language multi and the cultural education at Graduate School of Education at uh, New Jersey State Rutgers University in New Brunswick. And I was so blessed and fortunate because my mentor was a social linguist and 
she taught us both multicultural education and ethnic studies. It, it was very rare at that time. And so I know the issues of problem of multicultural education. And we need both. This is my view. Yeah, we need both. So it's important for us to continue discussion. We need to learn each other. We need to study each other. And I, I respect both of you <laughs> because you step up at this very difficult time. And I will challenge you as I have challenged all of these board members since last fall. So, yeah, I am very glad to meet you in person yes. tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Nelly Baquera. I'm the president for the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for taking on this application process. The PVFT truly wants a board that is interested in fostering an effective and nurturing educational environment. We have some essential qualities in school board trustee members because our working environment is our students' learning environment. First and foremost, we must prioritize support for educators and support staff. A trustee committed to advocating for all educators' rights, job security, and fair compensation not only empowers our educators, but also ensures they can focus on what matters most, our students. And I lost my place. <laughs> compensation and healthcare benefits are critical. For instance, Santa Cruz County was named the number one most expensive rental market in the United States, according to the National Low Income Housing Coalition this year. So any type of impact to our healthcare can be, can be the thing that breaks our financial well-being altogether. When educators and support staff feel valued and secure, they can dedicate themselves fully to specific positions that they, that they fill. Equally important is a focus on students' needs. Our policies must center on the well-being and mental health of every child by creating an environment where students thrive where resources are allocated to enhance their learning experiences, where, our where austerity measures on the backs of our students is not an option, and where the voices are heard, where their voices are heard and respected, such as the high school students and parents who have spent a year advocating for the return of the community responsive education contract with Dr. Tintiango Gupales. Open communication is a cornerstone of effective leadership. A trustee who engages in transparent dialogue with teachers, staff, and parents and students help bridge gaps and builds trust within the community. We appreciate it when trustees visit the sites. There's a lot more collaboration and partnership, equity, inclusion. So I'll end with one of our other slogans that we have is together we rise. Together we can create a brighter, more equitable future for our schools and most importantly, Thank you, for Mary. our students. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I've been a little apprehensive about this process, but uh, one thing I keep thinking of is that, that you're right, Trustee DeSerba, that this board w did this well with, with Trustee Scow, and um, so that leaves me a little bit more uh, hopeful here. Um, of the things that I would like to see in a new trustee is somebody who's going to honor and defend the Constitution, um, uphold Ed Code and bylaws, someone who will prioritize facts over feelings and personal politics. Um, I think of like my own treatment at Renaissance there. I think of what's happened with CRE. I think of the PN day um, thing, like you uphold the contract. Um, also, I would like to see somebody who is respectful of like institutional knowledge and um, like, you know, what WASC has to say, what the model continuation or what the continuing California Continuing Education Association has to say specifically about like our our model continuation high school that we had uh, Renaissance um, I like I would like someone who's students first that that's a priority um, that we have integrity when we say that 
um, someone who believes in Renaissance students and who believes in supports and maintaining normal expectations with support and not really like, um, and maintaining just our integrity uh, there ed educationally. Um, somebody who is gonna hear from the community. I think of the whole, the spending a measure L funds and um, they were spent on a staff room when we have so many needs at Renaissance. Um, the water situation, the field. Um, you, we want people to come to school. There's an auto shop there that's lied latent. Um, there's a need for a Spanish classroom. I, I feel like we didn't prioritize the, the community and um, we could have. So I just wanna thank you guys for being here and uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Serrano and I have, I've been very fortunate to be able to work alongside Dr. Navarro. Um, I was a student that went through Pajaro. I went to Hall District, Ohlone, Pajaro Middle School, Watsonville High. I was fortunate to go to college, come back, and now I'm working in Salinas Valley, where we see a lot of the a lot of our patient population are students from that area. And I think one of the strongest things that Pajaro Valley School District has that we have such a diverse um, student population, right? And I think I, when Dr. Navarro said, oh, I'm going to go for this, I was over the moon excited because she is someone that understands both sides, right? Her children go to Aptos High, but she also sees patients from Monterey County districts or Monterey schools, right, that I feel often are forgotten, such as the schools from Las Lomas area, Ohlone and Hall. And I, I am so excited. I wanted to be here to support. I should have a shift right now, but someone's covering me because I wanted to be here because this is what we need. This is what Paul heard about. I have three children going through this district. I think it's a wonderful district, but I often feel like it's about equity, right? Not so much equality would be great if we all had the same starting line, but we, we are not that district, right? Everyone's coming from different backgrounds. I remember almost flunking second grade because I didn't speak English. My parents were field workers. We would work the fields, you know? So I needed that extra support and I was grateful that I had it. Now I'm coming back, hoping that we can provide that for those students again. Thank you. Thank you to all of our public speakers. I'm now move us to item 3.3. Um, this report is being presented by me, Georgia Acosta, President of the Governing Board of Education for PVUSD. We are now going to take a brief recess to allow board members to review comments submitted by public, but they will not be read out during the meeting. I will now recess the rest for a few minutes.
Okay, I will now reopen um, the meeting. Um, so we did not have or did not receive any um, comments via our Google form. Um, so now I will take the board to item 3.4, provisional appointment, deliberation, and vote. This report, again, will be presented by me, Georgia Costa, President of the Governing Board of Directors of Education for PBUSD. Um, the board will now, the Governing Board of Education will now discuss possible nominations and vote. Um, for clarification purposes, the majority of members of the Board of Education Code under EC 35164 states that four votes must agree on one candidate. Under 35165, our six member board still requires a majority vote of four, regardless of number of members present. With that, I am now going to bring this back to the governing board of um, directors for discussion, questions, and deliberation. Questions again will be limited at this level, not to the candidates. And I'd like to um, first start with our student trustee, Esquida. Thank you. Thank you, President Acosta. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to come out. I know the interview process isn't always the easiest, but you know, it's the dedication at the end of the day. Um, you know, as a student trustee, it's been it's been great serving on this board with, you know, a lot of great people and, you know, having those discussions. So I look forward to, you know, having one of you guys on the board with us. I think both of your guys' interviews were great. And um, I also attend Aptos High and, you know, I love the school as well. Um, so I think both of you guys are really good individuals, but thank you for taking the time. Thank you, student trustee Esquida. And by the way, he did have to go through, not quite the similar process, but he did have to go through an interview process. So not with the six or seven of us at the time. All right, thank you, student trustee Esquida. Anything else from you before I move on to the other trustees and elected officials? Okay, I will now bring it back to the rest of the governing board of education. Any comments? Um, discussion, deliberation. Again, questions cannot be directed to the candidates. We've asked us questions. But if you have questions of I or um, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, we can answer hopefully any questions you have. If not, this is open for deliberation from the board now. Trustee DeSerpa. Um, <clears throat> this is not an easy thing to do, um, buy for a, a school board seat. And so I just want to say thank you to both of you for showing up, for your interest. Um, for a while there, we weren't sure that anybody was gonna be interested and I was wor getting really worried. You're both very well-prepared candidates having served um, on the Parent Alliance and gives you a lot of really good experience. So thank you for that service to Rio Del Mar. It's not easy either at, at a school like that where people have a lot of opinions. <laughs> There's not enough money, right? You guys do a great job of fundraising, yeah. And um, to Dr. Navarro, um, thank you for your interest. It's really exciting that there are two candidates in front of us that have kids in the district because that gives you um, a real world experience of what can be better. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you um, to both of you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Are you speaking? Trustee Bolano scow go ahead. Okay. Trustee Vice President Soto. Yeah, I just want to reiterate Trustee Disturpa's words. Um, this is not easy. In my tenure here in the last four years, I have never experienced such chaos, craziness. And I've learned a lot about my community in the sense that we're very diverse. And when I say diverse, I mean, we have views that fe people feel very strongly about. And uh, having to mitigate and mediate those in this position has been very interesting to me since I got here, since day one. And I'm sure if you studied our history, 
and what we've been through and what we've been dealing with. And if you watch the last few board meetings, you'll understand that. So if you're ready to come into the meat grinder, if so to speak, you know, strap your boots on, get your hard hat, flak jacket, and get ready to rock and roll because it's going to be fun. So God bless you both and may the best candidate win. Thank you, Vice President Trustee Soto. Others, Trustee Bolano Scow. Uh, well, it's uh, thank you both for, for applying seriously as, as the appointed trustee uh, who's been here a year and a half. I'm getting a lot of memories of that day. Uh, last February of 2023, and um, you know, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of courage, and uh, and both of you have demonstrated your commitment to our schools and in various ways, and to our communities in various ways. So that's very impressive. So thank you for everything you've been doing. Thank you for what you're going to continue to do. Um, I liked a lot of your answers, and uh, I feel. Um, that uh, whichever direction we go, we're gonna we're gonna be able to work together. We have to work together. That's that's what the deal with this board. It's, I think that's my view of governance. You have to work with uh, whoever else is on the board, and that's how that's the deal. And so I feel that you both understand that. And um, with that in mind, I, I just I just want to say thank you again. And uh, yeah, and uh, and thank you to the members of the public who also came and for those who spoke. Thank you as well, because uh, that's also very important. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Others? And well, I'd like to hear from others who haven't spoken yet, but if they're not ready, Trustee DeSerpa, I'll call on you if you have more to add. Um, so Dr. Navarro has experience serving on the Medical Executive Committee um, which, if those of you might not know what that means, um, in medicine, doctors police themselves. So when things go wrong, just like when we see things in closed session that we have to correct, um, that's the same in medicine. Um, and so I think Dr. Navarro has specific knowledge of leading uh, teams in the emergency department as the chief serving on the Medical Executive Committee, serving as a hospital leader, and serving for the Hospital Foundation, which raises millions of dollars every year for the good of the community. Some of you may or may not know that here in Watsonville at our hospital, they don't have a lot of specialists there who can treat very, very sick and complex patients. And so most of the patients that are here in Watsonville end up at Salinas Valley where we serve them in our cardiac care, in our um, stroke center, um, in a, for GI, for urology, for all kinds, for cancer care, for all kinds of specialty care. Many of the patients, I would say the majority of the patients from the who end up at Watsonville Hospital end up getting transferred to Salinas in part. So um, I think that Dr. Navarro really understands um, our community and has a commitment to helping because she's devoted her life to that. So I talked a lot about um, Ms. Haller's experience in terms of being on the Parent Alliance. I think we're very, very fortunate that we have two very well-prepared people in front of us. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. And then there was two. I'll treat you like my students, and I will mandate a call because everyone will speak even if they just thank the applicants. <laughs> Trustee Flores. Okay, yes, thank you both for stepping up and making this commitment to the district. Um, and I do agree that it's it's great that, you know, you do have children in the district because it does, you have that firsthand knowledge of, you know, what's what's um, going on in, in our uh, district. I have a, well, I had one elementary, middle, and high, but now I have middle and two high. Um, and so, yes, and I have two at Aptos High where your, your children are as well. Um, but I just want to say thank you again. You both, I mean, we are so fortunate to have two very, very qualified candidates. Um, and so I know eventually we're going to have to um, deliberate and, and pick one of you. Um, but I, I definitely appreciated uh, your answers to these questions. And um, 
yeah, I think I'm, um, that's it for right now. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Dodge Jr. I just also like to thank both of you for applying, you know, kind of going with what Trustee Soto's, it, it's, it's tough. You know, I've only been here, you know, six years, but you know, COVID and fires and, and, and the way people talk to you here, you know, a certain way people talk to you here wouldn't talk to you like that out there. But you know, us being up here, we, we have we have to listen and it's tough and it, it does get to you. You know, you, you find out um, in politics who your friends are and who they're not. Um, but uh, besides that, it's great. <laughs> you know, you, you, me going to the schools that I represent, Miniwai E Hall and Watsawa High, and you know, my daughter graduating uh, this year. Um, it's it's about for me. It's it's about your 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 district, your constituents. You might feel a certain way about an issue, but you have to remember your your here for the, the 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 people your neighbors your voters um you know again you might feel a certain way but when y your constituents come out you know your personal opinions go out the window and so i've always tried you know my best to vote a certain way but when i i don't make uh, a vote that's popular amongst my constituents and then i i go back and i i admit that i didn't vote a certain way and so i'm back and i have to vote how my constituents and that's the only reason why i'm here and so i just like to you know thank both of you and hopefully you know you guys are home regardless hopefully you guys are ready so thank you thank you trustee george jr trustee vice president soto yeah, i just want to follow up you know when we started this process there was a debate whether to spend money to run a special election or have someone to appoint. So I think we've kind of made a big savings here and not having to spend that, which was a huge amount of money. There were some people that felt very strongly about spending money, but I, there's an obvious uh, disconnect, if you will, on budgets and stuff and how it affects schools, bottom line. So that being said, you know, I, I think that uh, we're in a good place. We have an opportunity to, to appoint someone who's going to finish out Dr. Holmes' term. And, uh, you know, depending on your experience and what you see here and how you feel, you might want to do it again. And it's going to be up to you. Um, you know, in regards to uh, Trustee Dodge's comments, whether it hurts you or not, I don't know about you, man, but it doesn't bother me at the end of the night. <laughs> I got a little thicker skin, different background than you, of course. And, uh, I like to kick up my heels and laugh about it. So thank you. Any other deliberation from the board? All right, see none, then there was one. Um, so I want to thank both of you, actually all three who applied and um, sadly we had one candidate as I stated earlier that we had to disqualify because every 10 years there's a census and there's the potential for redistricting and pretty much almost ele every elected um, body within Santa Cruz County except for one had a redistricting and we did and one candidate was bumped out because of that so I'm very appreciative and respectful of all three of you who applied including the one who couldn't be here tonight by default because of the redistricting and they were bumped out of their area um, and then to show up, I mean, that was a huge part tonight. I, I mean, many of us have been through this, um, whether an appointed official or as elected officials and going through forums and going through the grueling process and it's nerve wracking. And, um, most people, um, really detest public speaking. Um, you know, it's the greatest fear in life, greater than the fear of death itself, right? So you're at a funeral, you got to give the eulogy, you'd rather be the guy or the gal in the box, <laughs> right? And that's pretty sad. So I'm super appreciative of you both showing up. I, I think you represent very well-qualified candidates. Um, and 
I don't know much much more to say. I don't want to mush you over with all my thanks and gratitude for applying um, because I was in close contact um, with Dr. Contreras and saying, do we have applicants, do we have applicants? And nobody was applying and it was like, okay, what are the next steps? So um, again, I w I'm gonna speak on behalf of the board, I think, and say what everyone said here. We are super appreciative of you taking the time to apply and the time to show up tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, and I see Trustee Flores wants to speak, so I will turn it over to her. Okay, well, I know we're all thanking you so much and having a hard time doing what we need to do, which is pick one of you, but it is because you both are just so great, and we're just so thankful that you both um, came out tonight, but I don't mind being the first to kind of give my thoughts on um, why I'm leaning, you know, towards um, one specific candidate. Um, I really, really appreciated. We, as a district, we're going to have some really hard decisions to make. Um, we've been watching the sustainable um, committee and watching what you know they're going through and and having to do a deep dive into our financials. And um, I'm I'm thankful to them for doing you know that because you know it, it's necessarily going to fall on the board, but they're kind of doing a little bit of the groundwork and. So I really appreciated, um, Dr. Navarro, your answer to number six. Um, you know, when, when asked, you know, when we're gonna have to face these hard decisions and you said, you know, looking at redundancy, looking at the cause, and, but also very much looking at who will be affected by these. Um, and I just felt like that was a really uh, great answer um, because there are some things in our district that we, you know, cover in several areas. Um, and so maybe that is like that just when you had said looking for re the redundancy and looking like, is there maybe something in our district that's covering this already? You know, so I did appreciate that. And I also like the fact that um, uh, Dr. Navarro, you have the, your pulse on both ends of our district. Um, and so with that, that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning. So I wanted to start that conversation because I know it's where we have to head. Trustee Flores, does that sound like a motion from you? If we're ready to do that. I everybody's don't. had an opportunity to deliberate. Okay. I'm willing to entertain a motion. All right. I make a motion to appoint Dr. Misty Navarro as our trustee for District 7. I have a first and a second before I call for a vote. Now I will call for any further <coughs> deliberation from the board on the motion that's on the floor. Trustee Bolano scout Yes, I, I want to second those uh, thoughts and and, uh, and thank the public comments and, and Trustee Flores and, and Dr. Nevada for being in touch with, well, through your work as a doctor. I have many friends who are doctors also in Salinas. And so um, their dedication to doctor culture to serve the population of the Salinas Valley and a lot of similarities with the Pajaro Valley mm -hmm. and a district that serves <coughs> families in both in both areas. So. I think that's very uh, impressive and will be and will serve you well um, because you really you'll get to know our families, our, our public health officials, our, like our teachers. They get to know our family, our families in a real, real way, in a deep way, in a well-rounded way. So um, that also makes me comfortable, uh, and I think makes you uniquely qualified to take the position on. Thank you, Trustee Polano Scout. Any other deliberation from any other board members before I call for the vote? Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, I'd also like to support Dr. Navarro. You know, Mrs. Heiler, you know, thank you for applying. You know, I agree, you know, it, it is about compromise uh, as well, you know, because as I stated before, you know, I've made certain votes wasn't, you know, what my constituents said wasn't the right decision and I had to go back and I, you know, I wanted to thank you about that too. And, you know, just being diplomatic and being neutral and being not committed because I live in an area in Watsonville where, where I live by a 7-Eleven and it's, whether it's going to 7-Eleven, the donut shop, picking up my, uh, my daughter at the high school, um, it's, it's tough. Danny, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about that? And it's just like, uh, you know, and so you have to, to learn about that. But, um, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm I'm voting for Ms. Navarro's 
Ms. Navarro represents, even though you're in Aptos, you're working in Salinas, um, you have to go through Trustee Soto's district. And, you know, North Monterey County, you know, is, as they say, you know, just an area that, that it's hard to get representation. And so you, knowing what the people are thinking and what they're saying and how they're feeling is important. And I also wanted to touch up on where you, you said on, on number three, how, you know, health is not just a, about the body, I believe, I think you said, and that is important. Um, you know, I represent Mini White Eho, Waltz of Ohio, and Radcliffe, and a lot of our students can't afford glasses. You know, I was lucky enough to where my mom had insurance for us and where we had the eye doctors come or to the dentist because that means a lot. You know, a lot of farm working families in my district are Trustee Soto's and even, you know, uh, Trustee Zacosta's, you know, they don't have insurance. They can't go to a, a, a primary care business. They have to go to the hospital because they don't have insurance and also they're afraid. And another thing you, you talked about is being hungry. You know, um, again, the schools that I represent, uh, I believe at 80, 85% of the students receive free lunch. And so I, I think that's also important because you know that, and we have to keep in mind that our, our children, our, ki our kids are still hungry today in 2024 in my areas and a lot of trustees. And so hopefully that's something we could continue to work on. And um, so my vote is for you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Jones Jr. Trustee Vice President Soto. Yeah, I just want to touch on question number three also for you, Dr. Navarro. <clears throat> One key phrase that stood out for me with, f from you was parent involvement, which is huge. You know, everything starts in the home. Discipline, respect, which are the two things that you need in life to get through it. And if you're providing that for your kids at home, then you won't have a problem. Um, and that that should happen universally throughout the entire district. Unfortunately, it doesn't because those, those things are broken down in certain homes, unfortunately. But if parents are involved, mother, father, a mother, a father, who, whoever's in charge or the person providing in that household can provide some direction, some discipline, some respect to their kids, they'll be okay. So that that's one thing that stood out from me or from you for me you know in that statement you know because i mean and not to discount you ms holler and your involvement with your kids but you know it that's a that's a very key point in in what we're doing because we can only provide so much as a school district as a board as a superintendent the parents need to be involved and uh you know, my parents were very involved with me and my mom was, she was a disciplinarian, but if my father had to get involved, it was over. So thank you. Any other deliberation from the board? Okay. And then once again, there was one. Um, so Dr. Navarro, um, I agree with so many um, of the sentiments that have already been said, um, as well as Ms. Holler, thank you very much. Um, your res Dr. Navarro, your responses to, again, question number three and six did resonate very well with me as some of my other colleagues have already mentioned, um, and including on number three, the parental involvement and student involvement. I mean, my, my husband has some of the most fondest memories of the nights his mom had to leave after cooking dinner to go to McQuitty School to go to a PTA meeting. And that's, you know, virtually, it's, well, non-existent and it's that sort of time now. And, um, and also for me, your comments with regards to question number seven um, and where we are at with um, school safety. Um, it is, I, I sometimes, nudge at the feeling of people saying, well, it's a different climate and a different time, and but it can't be underscored in today's climate. Um, that is why Trustee DeSerpa and I, we are the only two current sitting board members 
that were on this board when the then board made a decision to purchase these towers at a cost neutral situation and the safety of these towers, including and in recognizing how many employees we have in this one facility, it, it just can't be underscored. It, it, it just really can't. Um, so that is huge. Um, and, and as well as also the um, comments that Trustee DeSurface spoke to your vast experience, right? It may not per se be on a school board, but um, someone who's gone through some really recent serious personal family um, emergencies recognize like in those need m moments where there's just seconds of a response time and to be even keel and to be calm and to be able to make those decisions how critical and essential it is. I cannot even um, begin to underscore how grateful for that I am over the last few weeks um, for some things that my family and I've been through personally um, in personal emergencies are just so grateful for. So um, unless there's any further deliberation for the board, I am going to call for a vote by roll call vote. Eva, will you please call for the vote? I have a first and a second. I have a first from Trustee Flores, a second from Trustee DeSerpa. Yes, and I'm sorry, um, so Vice President Trustee Soto just reminded me that, um, again, based off of Education Code 35164, this vote does need to pass by a, a, a vote of four or more, regardless of being a six member vote or how many are present. The motion, um, thank you. The motion was from F Trustee Flores to move to approve the nomination of Dr. Misty Navarro, and that was seconded by Trustee DeSerpa. Do I have any clarification on that, or are we good? We're good, so that's the vote, the roll call. Trustee DeSerpa, your vote? Aye. Is Trustee Scow, your vote? Yes, I. Trustee Dodd Jr., your vote? Aye. Trustee Flores, your vote? Aye. Vice President Soto, your vote? Aye. President Acosta, your vote? Aye. And that will carry on a 6-0-1 with the one being a vacant seat. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Navarro. Welcome to PBUSD's Governing Board of Education. At this time, I will now adjourn this meeting at 7.37 p.m. <laughs>